And uh, let's start the debate with going across to Gautam Adhikari. Gautam Adhikari, let's, uh, let's uh, focus on Guantanamo and the larger Muslim question a little later in the discussion. First, let me come, uh, come to Pakistan, which is of more interest perhaps to our sub, uh, South Asian viewers, which is that he has demonstrated once again the, velvet the iron fist and the velvet glove. The inaugural speech said a, a brave new way forward will be found with Muslims, but first day in office in a foreign policy statement from Obama and Biden saying deliver on terrorism or else non-military aid is up for grabs. Well, I think we have to realize a couple of things here. One is that he's been elected president of the United States. So what he'll do is, is what he sees is in the interest of the United States. His job is not winning over Muslim public opinion unless it serves the interest of the United States at that point of time. Secondly, I think Muslim public opinion is too broad a term. There are Muslims and Muslims. There are various kinds of Muslim societies and countries. No, but he's talking about a whole new way forward. That was what he said in his yes, speech, based I, on mutual interest and mutual respect. Right. For instance, he's very popular in Indonesia, where he spent some time, and he's got enormous support out there. Um, he has uh, support, uh, I, I imagine, in, the, in, the, in, in one of the largest Muslim countries like Bangladesh, for instance. But in Pakistan, he's not very popular right now because I think he is changing policy towards Pakistan in a big way. And that is a very, very critical factor. The point is, he is now going to, well, it seems that he's going to use the economic weapon strongly against Pakistan that, look, you wind down terrorist camps. You cooperate with us on the Afghan-Pakistan border and you'll get money, triple the money that we gave you in mm -hmm. terms of non-military aid. But we want results. In short, it's a conditional aid. It's conditionalities of the right. kind that the and IMF... It's, it's, uh, tough, it's tough talking and he's had Pakistan in his sights since he was a candidate where he actually talked about bombing the terror camps in Pakistan. And he's not very popular there. <laughs> He, he's actually uh, no, not popular there at all. Let me ask you the question of, you know, the, the break with policy that uh, people are expecting. You know, the war on terror became a clash of civilizations, became Muslim versus America. Uh, Obama is supposed to break that. Do you see that happening with some sort of bold new initiative? Or is it really going to be much more of a continuum in terms of nuts and bolts? I think if we want indications of what's going to happen as far as foreign policy, putting aside Afghanistan and Iraq for the moment, but the general foreign policy of the United States, look back at the Clinton administration. Hillary Clinton is coming in as Secretary of State. She has put together and is putting together a team that is very much filled with Clintonistas. So if you want to see what we're in, in store for, uh, I think we're looking at Hillary Clinton with the Bill Clinton influence in the driver's seat. Okay, but uh, Stephen, let me put your point to Javed. Uh, Javed, if we're looking at a Clinton, a back to Clinton administra uh, administration and policy, what will that mean in a post-9-11 world? In a post-9-11 world with wars in Iraq, in Afghanistan, with the Al-Qaeda, with the Hamas and Hezbollah uh, advancing, with Taliban advancing in Afghanistan, w what, will the Clint uh, what will a Clinton policy in this situation mean? I don't think it's going to be, uh, you know, very, very different, be very different from uh, what it was in the pre-9-11 uh, uh, era. Engagement in the, in with, the, in, with the democratic in the, in the sense, In the sense, as Gautam, I think it started off, there are four or five different kinds of groups operating within the uh, targeted community that, I mean, you cannot have a general statement like pro-Muslim or anti-Muslim because mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia is... Uh, the kind of Muslim that the Americans will always love. Um, Iran is uh, just the opposite side. And, of course, uh, then you have Al-Qaeda, which is a third group altogether, which is neither Iran nor Saudi Arabia. And, of course, then there are the uh, leading heart liberals like me. So mm -hmm. you, you have... Uh, uh, who have nowhere to look. I mean, we, we are waiting for Obama. No, so are you, are you disappointed is, that he didn't speak out on Gaza as he should have uh, at the Israeli action in Gaza and that he did not really course, uh, uh, come up with anything stronger? Of, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, given the fact that everybody had to do the genuflection before the uh, election campaign, during that, when everybody went, all the candidates went one by one to the Israeli-American uh, lobby, and they said, well, we, we are indebted to you and we hope to be able to serve you better next time round. And so this is, um, this is what Obama did. This is what Hillary Clinton did. And now that they're both in the same team, it's uh, going to be uh, more of the same. So I think, but um, there has to be a way out. And I think one way out will be perhaps 
that Iran holds the key. And mm -hmm. if Iran mm -hmm. is negotiable, then I think everything else falls into pattern. That's interesting. So in this entire landscape of the different players in the Muslim world, Iran is actually Ira Iran the key. Is the key yeah.